Hello, welcome to the show. Now, you might be scratching your head if you're looking for any positives that we want to take away from the last couple of years. But of the few worth keeping, it's probably hybrid events. Yeah, one thing we've learned over the last year or so is that reaching an audience should be both in person and online. And there's one new product from Roland that is specifically designed for the job. So we'd like to welcome back Chris from Holden to run us through the product. So firstly, let's um, let's rewind a little bit before we talk about the uh, the new Roland product. What is a hybrid event switcher, Chris? Uh, good question. Uh, thank you both for having me back on. Always a, always a pleasure. Um, yeah, hybrid event switchers. Essentially, it's a you know it's a switching device that is going to allow you to cater for your audience at an event who are actually physically there and also your online audience so live streaming as well and how do, and so how do roland fit into this well they have well they have a plethora of of, of vision mixing uh, units available yeah. um and they have quite a few options that will give you that live stream element that's that's the easy part you know uh, there are many switches out there that can do live streaming nowadays it seems because it's a forever ongoing growing demand um but the actual vision mix inside you've also got to cater for you know what it is that you need to send locally to your audience in the venue itself if you're going to invest in a switcher you know you will almost want that switcher to be able to do as much as it can before you have to break out and bring in other devices i.e that switcher should be able to yeah. control what we send on a big screen that the audience can see in the venue that might be a presentation for example um, we may also want to send a, uh, a signal to the presenter on stage as a confidence monitor. And we also want to send maybe a slightly different version of the mix uh, to our audience who are watching online. So it's really about a vision mixing unit that can, can cater for, for all of those different demands that a hybrid event uh, will have. So I'm sure I can find other similar products to do similar jobs to this. Um, what are the standout USPs of these Roland switches? If you look at their lineup of switches, um, you, you compare it to brands where you might just start with resolution and the amount of inputs, uh, and then it just grows as you go further up the line. Uh, Roland have a really mm. varied uh, product offering where you know they'll have some that are really well suited for podcasting, for example, or really well suited to being um, sort of for, for events work where you might need to drive really large 4K LED screens uh, and you need 10-bit processing, for example, and they've got everything in between. So in terms of if you've got a, a, a certain idea as to the type of productions that you're predominantly going to be working on, there's going to be an appropriate solution for you. Obviously, there are ones that sort of try and cast the net as wide as possible and will cater for, a, for as many different types of productions as you can throw at it, but there are specialist units as well. Um, something that really gets overlooked with video switches in general is, is audio. Um, there's often um, the idea that if you're using a video switcher, you're probably going to be taking an output from an audio desk. And that's true for, for a lot of scenarios, but you know, sometimes you might just want to do a small scale production, two presenters, three cameras, and two professional microphones. And there's not many professional video switches out there that will allow you to use those professional microphones, i.e. XLR connectors that can supply 48 mm. volts phantom power. Most of the Roland units will allow you to supply phantom power if they've got an XLR connector. For example, even at the sort of, let's say, entry level side of things, they have a switch called the VR 1HD. That has two XLR connectors, provides you with phantom power. You've got three inputs for your cameras, and it will even allow you to do automated switching based on who is talking. So you think podcast, small scale productions, it's nice and easy. That technology, obviously, goes throughout the product range all the way to you know the V160, the flagship. Uh, other than audio, uh, you've got active scaling, a really big selling point uh, for the Roland devices. Now, if you look at other switches, you'll probably see that they have scaling on, on their inputs, uh, if they do have scaling, that is. Uh, and it will just say, you know, scaling, up, down, cross conversion, okay? What does that actually mean? Um, a lot of production switches, you have to set the resolution you want to work in. And if you feed in a video signal that doesn't conform to that to that project that you've set up, it will totally basically cross-convert, upscale, downscale it to fit that project. And that's great. 
with, with the Roland scaling, you get active scaling. So with active scaling, you can do everything that I've just talked about with, you know, what you can traditionally do with scaling on older uh, or other alternative uh, switches. Mm. But active scaling actually gives you access to how those scalers are working, what they're actually doing. And you might want to have access to that because maybe you want to zoom in a little bit more. Maybe you want to go 110% zoomed in so you can cut the edges off whatever frame is being fed into the system. Maybe you want to reduce it. Maybe you want to just have this, you know, taking up 50% of the frame. You want to maybe move that to the left or right-hand side of your frame. It's almost acting like a, an upstream keyer. Uh, so each of those ports that have scaling built into it, you have that flexibility for that video signal. You can really manipulate it much, much more so than what you can do with, let's say, traditional switches where they're just using passive scaling. And is that scaling activated? Is that controlled within the unit or is it plugging in a laptop or either? No, you can all pretty much everything, pretty much everything that you need to control on the Roland switches. For example, you know, the V160, which is the, the latest flagship unit, you can control physically on the unit itself. They all have a very similar menu system, uh, which yeah. you will see either on the built in screen, if the unit has a built in screen, or on the multi viewer output. Uh, and within that menu system, you can literally deep dive into each of those inputs and go into the scaling and have full control over every aspect of that scaler. So you mentioned there, Chris, the V160HD, um, which is, as you say, the flagship. Tell us, um, tell us why we should buy one of those. <laughs> How long have we got? Uh, okay, so the V160, obviously it's, it's Roland's latest, uh, its latest switcher. Uh, it's a eight channel HD switcher. Now it has eight SDI inputs and eight HDMI inputs. You're probably thinking, okay, well, why have we got 16 inputs? It's an eight channel HD switcher. Well, the reason is because, you know, if you're rocking up to an event, you might not know what cameras you're dealing with, what your client is going to give you to say, like, I need to get this into the show. Um, and with this switcher uh, and with a few of the other Roland switches available as well, uh, you can say, okay, channel one, I want that to be HDI one. You know, channel two, I want it to be HDMI two, or I want it to be HDMI eight. It doesn't matter. You have, you know, your bank of eight channels on your switcher and you can assign whatever you want to it, whether that be the video input sources uh, or still images that you've loaded into the system itself. Now, just going back to the hybrid event side of things, you do also have seven outputs. You know, that's SDI, HDMI and USB, a mixture of those three. Um, and you can assign whatever you want to those outputs. So going back to what I said earlier, if you want to just send um, camera one, which is your presenter, to them so they've got a confidence monitor, you can send that out over you know, SDI output two if you want to, and that goes to their monitor. Um, if we want to send something to go into the big screen for our audience, maybe it's a, an auxiliary mix. So a mixture between a close-up camera following the presenter on the stage and then cutting to slides, then we can do that as well. And, and obviously the same goes for your, your USB output. And that USB output, that's really where we tie in the live streaming element. Uh, you connect it to a computer, it's plug and play. You don't need to install any software. It will just show up on your computer or Mac uh, as a webcam. And then obviously you can go live in whatever program you want to. You could also even record locally on, on the computer as well if you wanted to do that too. So you mentioned all of these inputs and cameras. PTZs, they're very popular now. Of course, you guys at Holden have a fantastic range. How do they support PTZs? What's the control? How does how do you go about it? Yeah, well, the, the V160, uh, not just the V160, but other models as well from Roland, supports PTZ control natively to the actual switcher itself. So you get it on the local network, the same network that your PTZ cameras are connected to. And then from the V160, for example, you can control up to 16 PTZ cameras and you can control them physically right. from the desk itself. Now, if you want a little bit more finesse in the control, you can use an iPad or a Mac Windows computer and link it to the switcher. And then you sort of get a nice graphical uh, interface where you can use a virtual joystick. So um, with the V160, Chris, does it have your standard DVE transitions that you'd expect to find in a switcher? 
Uh, yes, yeah, it's it's got all the expected transitions in there. Whether or not you know these transitions are something you want to be using, such as a a star wipe. <laughs> I don't know how current those are, but you know transitions Page are in turn. there, of course. Um, <laughs> Page peel. <Yeah. laughs> no, you you do have a. In all seriousness, though, you do, you do have a. You do have transitions in there available yeah. to you, for you to 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 bring up and use. Most of the time, let's be honest, you're probably going to use a. A mix or a wipe or a hard cut and and they have physical buttons for that yeah yeah and we've chatted before about about the um about atomos recorders and i believe the v160 hd includes some sort of tools for triggering these 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 products what, what benefits does this bring to, to to people using the v160 so i mean if you're operating the v160 uh, and you're you've got your PTZ cameras feeding into it as well, and you're trying to keep everything quite streamlined in terms of the amount of kit that you're bringing uh, and how you're operating it. Uh, if you're using the likes of a, an Atmos Ninja V, which let's face it, isn't actually that expensive in comparison to a fully fledged vision mixer, you can take a HDMI 160 and you can set the V160 so that when you hit a physical trigger record button, your Atomos unit will automatically start that recording. Now, of course, that will work with uh, all the Atomos products, not just the Ninja V. You know, if you want to use yeah. a Neon, you can do. Uh, but it just means that, you know, the operator doesn't need to divert their attention from the V160, you know, to, to start and stop that recording. Cool. And finally, Chris, before we let you go, the all important shipping date, has that been announced yet? Uh, yeah, shipping is pretty much due now is it's due in august so uh at any point in time now we, we will actually start shipping these out yeah. to customers that's brilliant thank you very much chris it's great to see you again and of course we're looking forward to september when the kit plus show will be at twickenham and um holden and hopefully some um the v160 hd will be on show as well thanks to media proxy for their support you can find out why you need them at mediaproxy.com and we'll see you next time